So I'm catching up with uh, Mark van der Gijs, who is in Iceland. I read yeah. that uh, you're, you're, you started three companies, um, and mm-hmm. one of your companies, First Coin, an ICO uh, an, uh, investment bank, was That's bought correct. by uh, was bought by Mike uh, Novogratz, a billionaire, Mike um, correct, and a Wall Street guy. But you started four months ago. Why, why did you already start sell it? Well, you know, sometimes you get an offer you can refuse, right? And you know, normally I don't sell a company after four months, but. This was a great opportunity. The, the money was, of course, nice, but it's not about the money, really. It's about the fact that Mike's company can really bring us to the next level. And that's, that's really important. Just one second. I'm just going to put my stuff away. Yep. Sorry. No problem. Okay. I mean, so there were three companies. One is First Block, which invests in Bitcoin, which basically yep. you want to bring, which you want to buy and make public. The second yep. company was in First Coin, and the third company was a mining company, Hot8. You are in Iceland. Correct. Can I just assume that you maybe took a look at some of the mining companies here in uh, in, in Iceland and looked at the two or three cents a kilowatt? Yeah, that's price? correct. That's correct. Yeah. Today I visited BitFury's operations here in uh, in Iceland, mm-hmm. and I was pretty imp- pretty impressed actually with what the guys were doing here. So uh, yeah, and the Genesis, yeah, uh, yeah. the Dutch, uh, the Dutch Genesis. Uh, did you see them too? Uh, the German Genesis is actually not Dutch, German. but yeah. So well, they're, they're they're in the same facility apparently, which I didn't know until until I was there. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, anyway. so it was pretty good. Yeah. Hey, I, mean, I saw all kinds of pictures uh, on uh, where you basically send around where you were on the private jet. Uh, who's, yeah. who's, was that the, the jet of Mike? That's correct. That was his jet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you might get yeah. used to you don't don't get used to those kinds of little uh, little perks of the job. No, that's better than that's better than business or first class. That's for sure. It's a different level, but uh, also a different price class. So. You know, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. need to consider, right? Hey, so you st- you basically sold it to uh, Mike uh, Novakritz, but you're going to be stay involved. I mean, this this startup of four months, which um, basically was going to actually not help. really. No, I, ne- I negotiated. I don't need to be involved. Um, so uh, the, the current team is going to be going to stay on board. Uh, I mean, what what? How did you get in contact with uh, this guy, um, this Mike uh, Mike, Novogratz. Mike Novogratz? So Mike Novogratz actually is a uh, it was a connection of, of Harris Fricker, the CEO of GMP Securities, one of the, the leading investment banks in, uh, in Canada. And Harris is a guy who loves deals with. So Harris was in touch with Mike. And, you know, through Harris, we, uh, we, we you know, met Mike and started discussing about what we're doing and, you know, whether it would be a potential opportunity to work together. And uh, turned out there was one. So, yeah, we, uh, after, actually only after two, two quick meetings, we decided that we wanted to do a deal together. And, you know, then we negotiated a deal and, uh, that was actually November already, but it took it took a bit longer to close the whole thing, and uh, it was announced today. So pretty Wait, happy about it. Why does a billionaire need you to to have basically put a project together for four months? Why why does he want to go through the effort of buying you uh, instead of uh, instead of building it himself? Well, I think one thing is I put a pretty strong team together. Uh, you know, Fran, Franz Franz is the CEO, is a Dutch guy, is actually very good guy, very strong CEO, I think. He got a very strong CTO, the former CTO of Wood Street, another large company involved. Um, we've got some early early clients and big clients. So, you know, it's, it's a company that's, that's been growing fast. Um, and, you know, he could either build it himself or work with an existing company. And this is for him the best way to do it, building it. He was working on something to build, build something himself. Right? And, you know, by putting it together, I think he can grow much faster. This, you, it's hard to do this yourself. And, you know, we were lucky to... to to have a good team and, and build it ourselves and we did a good job there so he, he saw the opportunity and you know we made a deal okay all righty hey uh, how's the how's the other projects going the the first block your investment uh, your inv- the, the fund which basically only invest in bitcoin yeah so um the bitcoin fund's going pretty good um it's grown to about 35 million dollars right now uh we're not doing a lot of marketing for it anymore actually no marketing because we didn't have enough time um First block itself is doing very well. We're working on a uh, on a much larger ETF for uh, crypto investments. Uh, basically, we, we, it's, it's an exchange traded fund listed on the on the so listed on the stock exchange. Uh, you invest in this fund, and we invest in other crypto companies on behalf of you. So that's our strategy, and that that works really well. Yeah, I think um, you already so went public, right? Because you bought an, a shell company and and put uh, and put first block in a reverse takeover kind of public, making it public. So. No, we did. The idea was to do it actually in February. We decided to put it on hold and put the uh, the, the the ETF in first because it'll give us a, a much higher valuation. So we think the you know we could take first block uh, public. We we were ready to do it. We had the shell with everything done, and then we felt like you know if we, if we wait a few months, it may actually be better for us 
because the coming oil is much better and the value will be much higher. So that's that's the decision we made actually uh, last week, right before New Year, just to to, you know, to wait a few months and do the uh, do the fund first. So okay, and first um, block will yeah. have uh, first block is the overall company. It has two. It has one fund which only invests in Bitcoin, and the other money you're raising now is which it only well, invest in. It only invest in, 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 in listed in listed public sorry, in public crypto crypto companies. Uh, but actually, first block invests in a lot of other things as well. We invest in altcoins, we invest in ICOs. We do about one investment per week, per week right now. Um, so outside of the outside of the, the fund that we're uh, uh, you know going to list. Okay, so yeah. that's keeping you busy. Now, what's that Hot Eight uh, company? How's that going? Your uh, mining uh, yeah. your mining company? Yeah, that's that's really going to be a big company. <laughs> that's quite amazing. So we started the company in November, mid November. Um, it's a. It's going to. I think it's going to be the biggest Bitcoin mining company outside of China. Uh, and given that China is cracking down on, on Bitcoin uh, mining companies right now, it could be the biggest in the world. Actually, I think it's going to be a multi-billion-dollar company by the end of this year. That's my. That's my expectation. Um, so Sean Clark and I we set it up uh, in mid-November, and it's uh, it's going to uh, work together with Bitfury. Um, to basically uh, set up Bitcoin mining operations in Canada. We're going to do 200 megawatts this year, um, which is pretty big. And, you know, we keep on growing in the years after. Uh, we raised significant money last month, and we're doing probably another $100 million uh, next week. We're going to raise, we're going to do a quick roadshow next week in, in, in Canada and in, in the U.S., uh, three days. And then, you know, hope to raise another $100 million profit for this company. Okay. And, yeah, so it's, it's, it's and, you know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a big, big believer in Bitcoin mining. I think... It's much better to, to do Bitcoin mining and get coins through Bitcoin mining than buy them on the market because, you know, we were pretty efficient. We, we mined Bitcoins for about $1,280 per coin. And, you know, the Bitcoin price is currently about $15,000. So there's a huge profit in here. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty nice, of course. Yeah, and you use the Bitfury uh, infrastructure, these containers, uh, which are ready to go. You put them somewhere... And Canada, yeah. yeah, there's such a big margin. The price of electricity is not so important anymore. What is important where you put those containers? Well, the, I mean, of course, we are energy hunters in the sense that we look at the lowest energy price all over the world. That's where I put our containers. Um, at the same time, we look for locations that are, you know, politically very stable. So, you know, we, we could, for example, get free power in Venezuela. But the thing is, if you do that, the chance is very likely that those block boxes are going to be in, owned by someone else three months later. So you don't want to do it. Um, we're looking at locations that are that are cold, so it's you know it's easy to, to cool them because cooling is actually a very important part of Bitcoin mining. Um, so yeah, Canada has a lot of very cold locations, and just like Iceland where we are now, right now, I mean it's quite amazing, you know, the, the cooling how they do it here. It's it's just basically just opening opening the windows, so, but it's, it's a bit more complicated. They have filters and stuff, but it's really they're able to cool it without spending much much money on 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 on, uh, on air conditions, which is which is great. Okay, so these are your three uh, projects which you're working on. One is done, yeah. and the other two yeah. are uh, are going well. Um, and that's basically, and, yeah. and you you go from one project to the other. How do you think? What do you think in the last two months that we talked? How do you think the crypto uh, economy is developing? We're now at seven hundred forty billion uh, euro or dollars. How do you think mm -hmm. uh, things are developing? I mean, everything you touch at the moment uh, seems to float up. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the whole the whole crypto market is exploding, right? I mean, since we last thought, I think the crypto market at that point, Bitcoin was I don't know where it was, really five thousand dollars or so in in, in mid November, and then you know ten thousand dollars early December, then up to twenty thousand in mid December, now down a little bit. But I mean, it's 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 all exploding. Ethereum has completely exploded, went up five hundred percent, I think, in the last two months. Um, yeah, so it's I'm, I was lucky, has the right timing for the right companies and. That's, that makes it easier to, to raise, you know, significant capital and, and to really build, you know, billion-dollar companies or multi-billion dollar companies. It's, yeah. I was lucky with the timing and, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to have the right business partners and, you know, now I have the right financier, financiers as well. So it's it's not, it's it's actually very easy to get money in, in, the, in the companies. In the old days, when I did Tudo, for example, you know, raising capital was, was, was hard. It took me for Tudo for my first, my first round we did, took us over a year to raise, you know, just $1.5 million. And you know now, literally, you know, you raise five million dollars with one phone call in five minutes, and that's that's really the difference. Um, and that's that's great. And I'm very, I'm so I'm very lucky actually to be in that position. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that that makes makes me able to, to build these companies and you know uh, keep on doing it. So I'm 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 super happy. It's uh, 
2018 yeah. started fantastic, and it's it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a fantastic year, I think. Yeah. So, hey, uh, so what you see is that there's now a lot of classic money, a lot of dollars and euros, and 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 and, and normal investors who want to get into this crypto world. Yeah. So you, Sorry, you, can, you can easily yeah. you can easily approach them. They are willing to listen and they are willing to say yes very quickly. So do you see that all these investment well, banks? We, I mean, we, how, how because there's this there always seem to be we, that old financial world and the, and the crypto world and they basically yeah. were hating each other. And uh, and no, actually, does, is it most now getting my, better? Yeah, most of my investors actually are institutions nowadays. The ones the, the people who put money in Hadid, for example, it's mainly institutions. Uh, people that put money into um, well, into, into the first block uh, future IPO, it's, it's mainly institutions. That's our main main goal right now. We, do, we don't really want to work with, with, with retail investors. It's because they write smaller checks. They are more difficult to handle. Um, you know, this is easier. Yeah. yeah. So that's I mean, changing. I mean, so but, what you but, still, that, but there's still, but there's still a lot of banks, of course, that don't want to be in it. But the ones that, that like it, you know, they're part of it. They want to be in everything we do. So yeah. that's yeah. that's that's what we're doing. And yeah. where are these people coming from? These uh, these these uh, these investment bankers and this uh, and this uh, these big uh, what kind of what kind of organizations are they? Well, I'm, I, I can't I can't give you names. No, you don't have to give names. But no. are these investment I mean, they're, they're, they're banks they're or high level big, high fa high value individuals or no, I mean no, no, are no, already these, pension these funds are, these already are, getting there? These are these are pension funds. These are uh, large large US investment funds. These are. Um, yeah, it's, it's mainly mainly large U.S. institutions that put money in, and we're talking to a few large banks, Canadian banks now, to see if they want to join us as well. Because so far there has there has not been any real banks in part of this. Part of this, uh, they're sort of waiting. But I think we, you know, so next Monday I'm in Toronto actually uh, speaking to to a large bank. Um, hopefully that's going to uh, going to be successful. But a pension so. fund is is willing to join you, even though. The banks, the yeah. banks of the whole uh, of the whole society are not in there yet. Some some pension funds are, are you know, not every pension fund is as, as conservative as the, as, as the others. Mm -hmm. There are some that, that want to be part of it, and uh, you know, they make crazy money, of course. So yeah. You know. Hey, and, and what about these high value individuals like these My Michael uh, Novogratz? Uh, are these are there also a lot of those kinds of rich people who want to get into this business? Or uh, yeah, there are. It's more. It's more and more. Yeah. It used to be more the smaller investors. Now it's really the uh, the big the big ones that's you know the, the billionaires that are that want to be you know have some some of their money in here. Uh, but they mainly invest in, in in Bitcoin, mainly in Ethereum. They don't really look at companies that much. I think they're waiting more for for for, for traded companies to invest in. And for example, with what Mike Novogratz is doing with Galaxy, and I think that's that's a company that many of the high net worth individuals probably will put money in. It's it's a great investment, I think. Um, so I think they you know they're going to make good money on that, and so that's a good entry for them. Okay. It's, it's now, less for risky. our uh, for our poor retail investors, do you have any? Uh, is it still huddle on Ether and uh, and Bitcoin, or do you have other coins uh, you find interesting? Yeah, so I mean, I'm still, I'm still a big big you know big believer in, in Bitcoin, Ethereum, the big coins. Uh, but I'm now also working with a smaller coin called Emer Coin. Uh, EMC is uh, the, the the abbreviation. Um, it's listed on 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 Bittrex. It's listed on Litecoin. Um, so smaller exchanges. I, I think this is going to be. A very big um, coin eventually, simply because it's a fantastic team. Uh, yeah. They built their tech already. Um, it's a company that's valued at the current price at about two hundred million dollars. If you look at other companies in that that are you know much worse than they are, they're they're, they're multi-billion dollar companies. So um, I, I decided to join the advisory board together with uh, George Kikvatse from uh, Bitfury and with Bill Tai, a well-known Silicon Valley uh, VC. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to put them on different exchanges. Uh, we're going to work with them to find clients to to work with them. And yeah, that's that's something I'm going to do later this week on Thursday. Actually, I have meetings for this. And uh, yeah, that's so yeah, getting busy, having fun. Okay, we'll see you at the I, day of the crypto yeah. in Amsterdam, and uh, nice. we'll hear uh, what's the latest update. That's in a couple of weeks. Enjoy your flight to uh, New York. Yeah, I need to start boarding. I'm, I'm the last one to board. I think. Okay. So, so, thank okay. you, thank yes. you, Mark. Nice, See you. nice catching up. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.